Tonight we are going to address the third method to solving a system of equations, which is substitution. We also have a couple other things that we're going to talk about this evening, such as solving a system of equations with three variables and some terminology. So let's get started. In your packet towards the end, it might even be the last page, is a page that looks like this. And I'd like to just address this so that we can talk about some of the vocabulary that applies to our system of equations. Now, we uh, talked about this when we first started talking about systems of equations with graphing, that there could be one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. And there are some other kind of terminologies that apply to this as well. and. Really, it's just about learning the words, okay? So if we have what we consider to be one solution to our system, then we call that a consistent system that is independent, okay? It's consistent because it has an answer, and it's independent because these are two independent things, and we have actually one solution to the answer. When we have an infinite number of solutions down here, it's also consistent. We have solutions, but there are an infinite number. They are all basically the same thing, so they are dependent. When we do not have a solution, then it is called an inconsistent system. We, there's nothing that satisfies this. We have parallel lines, and it's an inconsistent system. Okay? So if you think about it graphically, if the equations have different slopes, basically, and then the system will be independent and the lines will cross at a point. If they have the same slope but different intercepts, so they're parallel lines, it's an inconsistent system and they never cross. If they have the same slope and it's the same intercept, they're basically the same line, so that's a dependent system. From an algebraic per system, from an algebraic perspective, if you're solving the equation using addition method or elimination or substitution and you find that x and y are both a number, then it's going to be an independent consistent system. Okay, we have a, a solution. If it is a situation where you're going to get 0 equals 3, that is obviously no solution, so that's inconsistent. And if we get the identity, then it's an infinite number of solutions or dependent. Okay? So now we're going to take a look at how this might look graphically with a system of three equations. Now, a system of three equations or three variables represents planes, not lines. So if that's the case, then we could have three non-intersecting planes here, and this would be no solution or an inconsistent system. Remember that this might be the equation of a plane, x plus y plus z equals 10, okay? Z is our third dimension. We could also have no solution here. What's happening is um, you have two planes that are intersecting, and you can barely see this one up here. This is kind of flat, not intersecting the other two at the same point. So that's also no solution. Now when we have solutions, we could either have an infinite number of solutions. They all intersect, forming kind of this line. That's a, there's a, there is an infinite number of solutions there. Or we kind of have one plane crossing through two other intersecting planes, so there's just one solution in the middle there, and that's going to be our consistent and independent system. Okay? So let's take a look at how these look algebraically, and then we'll come back and solve some th systems of three equations. So to solve a system of equations, you always need to keep in mind that you have options, okay? And really, you do need to take advantage of the most appropriate option. Right now, I'm teaching you the different methods, but at some point, you're just going to be given a system of equations, and you're going to have to decide which method is easiest. So I would caution you about getting into the rut of using one type of strategy all the time. Next year, in geometry, we use systems of equations quite a bit, and some systems lend themselves more ni um, nicer to one type of solution versus the other. So you should be comfortable with all different 
strategies. To solve a system by using substitution, we will go forward and hopefully this will make some sense. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is, on your notes here, solve an equation for one variable. So kind of like a mini literal equation, very easy literal equation. So you're going to get x in terms of y or y in terms of x. And then you're going to plug it back in and solve and then go back and solve for the second variable and of course check. So here, it's kind of nice because we have y already in terms of x. So we would just plug in that expression 3 plus x for y and we would solve it. All right? Pretty straightforward. Plug back in, go in and solve for y, kind of straightforward. That's basically all it is. Now, of course, it could get more complicated depending on what your substitution method um, is and what that expression looks like, of course. Okay, so if we graph the two equations, they would intersect at that point, 1, 4. That's what that means. Which answer would check correctly in this system of equations? You do need to know how to check. So give that a quick once over and tell me which one is correct. You got it. It's option three. Checks in both equations. You got to be careful with that, okay? All right, so try solving this one using substitution. Think about which is the easiest to solve in terms of the other here. Now, there's no wrong answer, but you see x is kind of by itself with no coefficients, so it's pretty easy just to move 3y to the other side, and you get x equals uh, negative 3y plus 7, or 7 minus 3y. It doesn't matter because we are plugging that in for x, and then we are going to solve. plug back in, find the second variable, and you're good to go. Check them, of course, always. Check, check, check. And it does check in both equations. So if we take a look at the next one, um, this is obviously easier to do when you have one equation in terms of another or if you have a variable that's alone. If you solve the first equation for x, go ahead and do that quickly on some type of margin on your paper, and then tell me what you would substitute in. So hopefully you solved that and you got number two. All right, try this one and see what you think. Quickly pause here and see what happens. So hopefully you found that this one tend to come up with a special case. This is a case where we have no solution. Okay, if you look at those lines, think of those equations as lines. They have the same slope. They both have a slope of negative 1, and they have different y-intercepts. Try the next problem. And you should pause here and do that on your own, okay? This one, when we substitute in, we find it's a special case of always true. If it's always true, think in your mind what other words that would relate to. Okay, It's an infinite number of solutions. It's always true. Therefore, it is consistent and dependent. Okay. If it's always true, what does that mean? They should be coinciding lines. The lines lie on top of one another. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is just do those next two problems on your own really quick, and then I want you to come back, and we are going to give you the answers, and we are also going to look at the next page in the notes, which is solving systems with three variables. So stay tuned. Okay, so very briefly, in the first one, I got A equals negative 3 and B equals negative 5. And on the second problem, G equals 1 third for all you fraction lovers out there, and H equals negative 4 and 1 third. Okay, we will um, work on this section in class tomorrow, so don't worry about that. What I'd like you to do now is take a look at the next section of your notes, which talks about system of equations in three variables. 
Okay, a system of equations in three variables is really not that much harder than a system of equations in two variables. Instead of talking about lines, we are talking about intersecting planes. Okay. If you look at the equation right under the heading of the notes, 2x plus 3y plus 4z equals 6 describes a three-dimensional plane. So, there can be no solution, one solution, or infinite solutions, as we already saw. And if you try to solve it, the first one we're going to do is solving elimination. You can use other methods, okay? You can use substitution. That's for those of you who have a very strong algebraic backbone, all right? And you will get experience in that next year. But what you want to do, basically, is to pair up the equations to eliminate a variable. Now, these are pretty... Um, organized pretty nicely for you because we have all of these three y's here. So we're just going to pair them up, these two and then these two, and then we will get a system of equations in two variables which you already know how to solve. So if we look at this, basically I just added these two equations and I got 3x plus 2z equals 11. Likewise, I added the second two equations, and I got 6x minus 2z equals 34. Now that gives me two new equations that I can then choose to eliminate a variable in, and this was arranged very uh, conveniently for me. So I can go ahead and add those two, giving me 9x equals 45 and x equals 5. Then you have to go through the process to get the other variables. So why don't you go ahead and plug back in and see what you get for z and y. So I got z equals negative 2 plugging in and y equals 1 and our coordinates on a three-dimensional plane are x, y, z in that exact format so it's 5, 1, negative 2. So if you're feeling confident go ahead and try example 2. It's not horrible and it's actually kind of fun. So go ahead, give it a shot and come back and check with me. All right, so if we want to use elimination to solve the f system of equations, it's not set up quite as nicely as the last one, but we can get it set up pretty well. Now you may have chosen to do yours differently. I just chose, because I already had this 4 and negative 4, to go ahead and just multiply this equation through by 2. Okay, and so if I do that, it gives me... Um, 8x plus 4y minus 4z equals 20. And then I went ahead and set up, I paired my equations up, and I got a new system which looked like this. And I had to multiply through. Okay, so I got these two equations. They weren't set up quite so nicely. Now you can divide through to make it a little simpler, get rid of those big numbers. That's a trick that I try sometimes because then I don't have to use such big numbers to do this. Okay, 32 and 10 are kind of yucky. So you could make this 5x plus 6y equals 26 and make this, uh, let's see, 8, I could have divided through by 4, but um, 8x plus 10 y equals uh, 28. Or I could divide through again, uh, 4x plus 5y equals 14. And then that's a little easier to deal with, okay? But I did it this way, and so that's my answer. I did get y equals 6, and I got x equals negative 2, and finally z equals negative 3. So we will practice this and regular two system of equations in two variables using substitution tomorrow. Have a great night.